Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that black and yellow guitar icon thingy, so that you don't miss any interviews coming up, as well as uh, hit the notification bell, make comments, leave comments. It'd be great. And hit the like button. Uh, today, I've got a very special guest, one of my favorite guitar players for decades and all of my life growing up, Mr. Frank Hannon of Tesla. How are you doing, Frank? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on your show. Awesome. You, you said you had a comedic approach, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes it, uh, it's purpose and sometimes it's not. So, yeah. I'm, well, here we go. I can just throw one in here. I'm wearing the toque because I'm working on, uh, well, everybody knows I'm bald, so there, there's no uh, secrecy in there. But I'm wearing the toque because I was having problems with my lighting. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, what did the fish say when it... Uh, was swimming and it hit a wall. Uh, you tell me. Damn. Oh my God. Uh, you must be a father. That's a <laughs> yeah, dad that's joke. a dad joke. In fact, I've got a book over here somewhere of uh, dad jokes right here. That's awesome, man. That's you awesome. Do a when you come to a Tesla meet and greet, a lot of times I'm the, I provide the comedy relief. Well, the next time I see you guys, I'm going to get you to sign this. I'm reading this currently. What is it? I can't see it. Um, it's actually, uh, it's a book on Nikolai Tesla. Oh, great. Biology. You know, people ask me all the time, oh, Tesla, uh, like the car? Uh, you know, they always give me that, the car? Yeah. When I say no, Tesla, the band, since 1986. But honestly, it's about Nikola Tesla, the inventor. Yeah. That's where we got the name from. It's all about the electricity and the inventions and the, the wild and crazy visions that he had that changed the world. Yeah, he actually, uh, there's a little controversy in there too. They're saying that uh, the uh, CIA or FBI or something took a lot of his work after he passed. I think he passed penniless in New York City in a hotel and uh, a lot of his stuff they're saying um, was stolen for nefarious reasons. Oh yeah, I don't know. They dis they destroyed him and uh, they they hid all of his stuff. A lot of it was during World War II. They were concerned that Hitler was going to try to get a hold of his stuff. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of interesting, uh, sad and tragic stories around Nikola Tesla. Right on. So let's talk about Tesla 2.0. I don't know if that's funny or anything, but I mean, when I think of Tesla, I think of you guys first and then Nikola. So, I mean, obviously you're on my radar. I've been a fan for years, seen you guys probably half a dozen times, but you guys just released Time to Rock about nine days ago. And it was from a live show you did in Sturgis at the Full Throttle Saloon. And everybody get ready for this summer, you're releasing the Full Throttle live album um question on that set list uh how many tracks are going to be on the album and is there anything new that maybe added some new music well those are great questions and uh thank you um time to rock the song we actually released at the end of the year last year the studio version mm -hmm. and the version that you're talking about was just released is a lyric video that's got all kinds of crazy Tesla special effects on there yeah. that I directed and produced with one of our crew guys, Crusher, who's an awesome uh, musician himself and a videographer. Um, I've made a lot of uh, good connections with guys that are very talented and hungry and artistic. Uh, another one is Brandon Gullion. Uh, he's a videographer that I've been uh, directing, and I directed the original Time to Rock video with him, as well as some of my solo uh, material, Ride Strong video I did with Brandon. And um, anyway, long story short, I got these young guys that are really talented video guys. Yeah. And Crusher just uh, put together this lyric video for Tesla that just came out for Time to Rock. It's brand new, and it's got some crazy effects, and it's got the lyrics. But like you said, it has the live audio mix, unreleased audio of a live version from Time to Rock that's coming from the album that we're going to release called Full Throttle Live. 
And to get to the second part of your question, there's going to be eight songs on there, and they're going to be songs that we haven't released live before. So we're not putting out signs or love song or modern day cowboy or any of that stuff. It's going to have more deeper tracks like Changes Live and Miles Away Live and Lazy Days, Crazy Nights Live. And, you know, more of the obscure kind of stuff that we've never released before. Yeah, right on. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You guys have such a um, a portfolio of great songs. Like, I mean, I, I would love to hear Mighty Mouse Live. I mean, that's that's one of my favorites as well. You know, thanks, man. I love that song, too. My son makes an appearance live on the uh, studio version. He's the one that's going, Mighty Mouse! That's right. You know, we did that when we release an album, we play the majority of that album during that time period. But then as years go by, we have to narrow it down to one or two songs from each album to only, we only have 90 minutes. Yeah. So from that album that Mighty Mouse is on, we that's uh that's also got Miles Away. It's also yeah. got Cotton Cream, which we played Into yeah. the Now. Uh you know, but yeah, Mighty Mouse, we did play that a lot and I love that song and you know what? I'm going to put that on the list. Hold on, let me write that down because I do like that song a lot. Right on. Um, and I'm not oh. looking for uh, publishing royalties for uh, reminding you. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Our management commission. Oh, man. Yeah, nothing like that. Um, I want to talk about a few things that um, are in the now, right now. Aside from that, a lot of people haven't uh, heard yet. But um, they may have known that Troy uh, Lucata was taking some time off of a few years ago. But when you're starting this residency, you're doing a residency, uh, everybody check out uh, the link below. I'm going to attach the tour dates. You're doing a Vegas residency at the House of Blues starting next month. And then you're going to be doing, a, you know, I don't know, 24, 25 shows across the states um, to probably be supporting, um, well, maybe not supporting Live Album. But anyways, you're doing some shows. But you're going to have a new drummer in there. Um, and it's not going to be Troy. So tell everybody who it's going to be and how it relates to Dawkin. Okay, well, it's really not news anymore because um, it's been over a year now that we have been touring with Stevie Brown mm. on drum. And Stevie Brown is Wild Mick Brown's little brother. Now, people don't know this, but Dawkin, not Don Dawkin, but George Lynch... Mick Brown, those guys are from our area of Northern California, which is Auburn, Sacramento, up in the foothills of Northern California. And that's where those guys are from originally. So Mick Brown and George Lynch moved to L.A. when, uh, you know, in the early 80s. But little Stevie Brown is the younger brother. And he is as good, if not better, <clears throat> than his brother on the drums. <laughs> He kicks ass. He's got a great personality, super positive. He's played in bands around Sacramento for years, and we've known him for years. He's I've I've known him since he was a little teenager kid coming to watch me play in my kaleidoscope shows, you know. So he's been family forever and he's played with us off and on when Troy has bowed out on other occasions and he's covered for Troy. So it's great. Honestly, Steve Brown has a great energy. Everyone that has seen the show really enjoys it because the, the kid is just full of energy and he brings a new life into the live show. Right on, right on. Um, and on the Full Throttle Live album, there's probably going to be a drum solo on it because I'm a sucker for drum solos. And I talked to Steve Stevie Brown about doing a drum solo and we recorded it at Full Throttle Live. You know, so... It's really cool. Right on. Well, that's great, man. Um, it's a small world in certain ways, right? A lot of you guys that um, made it big did grow up in certain areas, and you have all those connections. So that's great. Um, that's great for Dawkins fans, uh, knowing that uh, if it's not Mick Brown behind the, uh, the kit, it's going to be uh, Steve Brown. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that. And by the way, I looked at your tour schedule, eh? How come no shows in Canada, eh? G.A., um, you know, I, <laughs> Gordy, I, 
I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 you know, that routing and touring department yeah. is not my, it's not my job. I, I don't know. It's okay. It's okay because I, I'm quite lucky in the way that I live right on the border with uh, Michigan. Like we, we crossed the international bridge at Sault Ste. Marie and I've seen you play at Kuwaitan, uh, you know, buzz, a bunch of times. So I'm lucky. I can see you guys. So. I love Canada. When I was a kid, uh, my grandparents used to go to Victoria all the time, British Columbia and Vancouver. And uh, we have toured up there a lot, but not enough. And I love Toronto. Um, some great friends of mine uh, have an amplifier company called High Watt, and they build them in, in Toronto, up up north of toronto and i whenever i'm in upstate new york i'll rent a car and i'll drive and go there and visit them and right pick up some equipment try to make it across the border with some canadian amplifiers and beer. <laughs> but uh i hope we get back to canada like i said it's not my job i handle yeah. more of the production of the music i'm more of the music director of the band i'm not really the tour director i know i mean i'm just teasing you and then the booking agent's job yeah I'll, I'll get to him boy oh boy no i'm just teasing you i know it's um it's a challenge because the country's so vast you gotta you know you can't be burning all your you know but we're feeling lucky that we're even able to do what yeah. we do right now um we're doing the vegas residency uh in march for five shows and we're doing the monsters of rock cruise uh first part of may and we're doing a bunch of other dates. We're going to be near you in upstate New York, I believe. Um, but with COVID and everything that yeah. has happened over three years, man, I mean, I know. We're, we're feeling very lucky that we're even able to do what we're doing. Well, I'm going to come down and see you. You guys are hitting Detroit and Grand Rapids. I'll, I'll try to hit one of those shows for while well, I'm going to anyways. Great, man. It'll be great to see you. Um, I'll let you go in a minute or two. I know you're busy. It's probably presser day. Is has there ever been any talk about doing another five man acoustical jam um, kind of um, album? You know, the one time we did a Canadian tour of all acoustic shows. That's one of our Canadian tours we did in, in uh, I want to say around 2002 or somewhere around that period. We incorporate the acoustic set in our show sometimes now mm -hmm. but doing a full-on five-man acoustical jam thing again i don't think we're gonna probably do that like okay. full on yeah we're we're more interested in rocking right now um full throttle live that's coming out is a rock it's it's got more rock stuff you know mm -hmm. um the acoustic thing is great you know i do a lot of solo acoustic work um, mm -hmm. i'm gonna be putting a solo acoustic album it's going to probably be called ride the wind and that's going to be coming out sometime this year but for tesla right now at this stage we're in the fourth quarter of our career and we're going to ride it out rocking man right on. i think we're going to keep on just rocking it yeah like you said you got too many uh great songs now so it's a challenge to just to fit them in um your 90 minute set list every night so yeah no that's great um quick question what's the opposite of uh unsubscribe subscribe yeah man do as frank hannon a tesla says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews with these great interviewees um i'm going to put the links to the shows and everything down below in the description box so make sure you click on that so you get wind of when the album is released and uh make sure you check tesla out if you come to your neighborhood uh once again thanks a lot frank i really appreciate this Thank you. I want to tell you another thing on Full Throttle Live. It's coming out. It's all live. And we're going to record in my garage next week. We're going to record live in my garage and put that on as a bonus track at the very end of it. The secret track. Remember when bands would put the secret tracks? Yeah. Well, we're going to do a cover of Aerosmith's SOS, Too Bad. Have you ever heard that song? Yes, I have. That's going to be, oh, wow. That's a rocker, right? That is. So you're doing that next week? <laughs> yeah, we're going to work on that when I get home here next week. I'm really excited about recording that song. And it's going to be the bonus track on the live album. Right on. And if you get a chance, 
Dig Up the Heroes. I've been telling everybody for years, this is one of my favorite songs that I've ever heard you do, Frank. Yeah, man, you got to dig that up, man. I'm going to do that when we hang up. I'm going to look for that one. I forgot about it. It's got a cool riff. It does. That it's that a Rick Derringer kind of riff. Yes, Rick Derringer, but it was actually inspired by a Canadian guitarist. Can you guess who? Uh, well, there's a couple. I like, um, I'm going to think, ah, there's so many. There's. It's, you know, it's the greatest Canadian guitarist ever. The, well, probably the guitarist. I like Rick ever. Emmett. Rick Emmett's my favorite, but you talk about Alex Lifeson? No, I'm talking about Frank Marino, buddy. You know what? I just interviewed Ronnie Latecro. Yeah. From TNT, and he brought up Frank Marino. This this two Dude. hours ago I interviewed him. Mahogany Rush was one of my favorite bands growing up, man. They used to play Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush played Oakland Coliseum in Northern California, Day on the Green, uh, that live album. But my riff in the song The Heroes was totally influenced by Mahogany Rush, Dragonfly. Wow, that's yeah. a game changer, man. Oh. Hey, I'm going to go back and listen to that song, man. Thank you for reminding me of that. And um, everyone who's listening, what he's talking about is an obscure solo song that I wrote. I have a lot of solo songs. Please go to Spotify and look up Frank Hannon, and you'll hear, you'll go, holy cow, this guy was freaking going nuts. I got about eight solo albums. <laughs> I didn't even realize how many I had. So that's on Spotify? No, that song is not. No, oh. but all my other stuff is. But yeah. I'm going to go back and revisit the heroes, and maybe I'll re-release it. Yeah, man. Oh, God. Hey, once again, thanks. I appreciate it, Frank. Thank you very much. Tell me your name again, bro. I'm having a brain fade. It's uh, Ernest Skinner. Ernest Skinner. All yes. right. Mr. Thanks. Skinner, uh, thank you again for having me on your show. And all you Tesla heads out there, we'll see you soon. Uh -huh.